Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy and praise, Hallelujah. Now we're continuing and we'll be finishing within the next day or so our look into the life of Job through the book of Job. And today we are in chapter 38. Now we have heard from Job. We have heard from his three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And we've heard from this young man by the name of Elihu. But now with great severity, the Lord begins to speak. And that's how verse 38 begins. In verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now from chapters 38 to chapters 41, we're going to hear what the Lord has to say. And to sum this up, basically God is going to express his disdain with Job by pointing out that it is God that hung the stars in the sky. It is God whom striped the zebra. It is God who protects and sustains the fowl of the air, the beasts of the earth. Now, speaking of the beast of the earth, one of the most speculated topics in these chapters is what is the unicorn? What is Leviathan? And what is behemoth? And because no man knows, because these translations are lost in the Hebrew language, because this is speculation, I'm going to avoid those topics. If you would like to research those on your own, I invite you to do so. But I want to focus on the main message of these chapters, and that is the Lord demanding an answer from a simple man who has the audacity to think that he can question him. And that's how he begins in verses 1 through 3. He says in verse 2, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, who comes into my presence and brings darkness with them? Darkness because man is defiled by sin. God is light, pure and holy light. And yet Job violates that light by demanding such a counsel with God. He continues in verse 3 and says, Gird up now your loins like a man. Quit acting like a baby. Stand up. Be a man, for I will demand of thee, and I demand that you answer me. And so he begins his questioning in verse 4. He says, Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare unto me if you have understanding. In verse 8 he says, Who shut up the sea with the doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? In verse 11 God says, Unto the seas that he has created, Hitherto shall you come, but no further. And here shall thy pride waves be stayed. In other words, I've set boundaries upon the seas, where they begin and where they end. Can you do such a thing, Job? He says in verse 17, have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Have you seen the other side? Have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you seen beyond life? Do you know what the hereafter holds for men? Well, of course, he's asking questions of Job that Job has no answers for. In verse 22, he says, Have you entered into the treasures of the snow? Or have you seen the treasures of the hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? Now, if you turn to Revelation chapter 16 and verse 21, we are told that there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent or a hundred pounds, some theologians even speculate that this could be as high as 150 pounds. Each hailstone, 100 pounds. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now this is during the time of the great tribulation. Yet here in the book of Job, some 5,000 years earlier, God asks of Job, Have you reserved against the time of trouble the hell that is awaiting that day? against the day of battle and war? He says in verse 6, Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts of man? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Certainly it is not man. It says in chapter 40, verse 1, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, 
Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. In verse 9, the Lord continues and asks, Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, Job. Array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. Behold, every one that is proud upon the face of the earth, and bring him low. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. And then Job responds to the Lord in verse 4 of chapter 40 by saying, Behold, I am vile, I am wicked, I am darkness, thou art light. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. He continues in chapter 42, verse 2, and he says, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. You have asked me, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have responded by saying things that I do not understand, things too wonderful for me. In verse 5, Job says, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye has seen thee. And because of this, I abhor myself. I fall prostrate before you, and I repent in dust and ashes. I see my position as a worm of a man, and you as the great and mighty God, and I lay silent before thee. It's as if Job were standing in the midst of a great hurricane, or tornado, or earthquake, and making demands of such a force. Well, that's absolutely a ludicrous thought because he is so weak and powerless against such a force. And even greater than that, he stands before the Almighty who controls such events with the simple whisper of his word. He now sees for the first time in his life the absolute beauty and majesty, power and might of the Almighty. His understanding has been opened. His eyes have been enlightened. And yet what does he do? He sees himself as the filth of the earth. He falls in recognition because of this, in adoration, in praise, in worship for who God is. He understands his littleness and God's greatness. And because his mind has been opened, his eyes have been enlightened, his relationship, the way he sees his relationship with God will never be the same again. It's the picture of a beggar before a king. And we, friends, are the beggars, and he is the king. And anything that he bestows upon us is by mercy, compassion, and grace. We've done nothing to deserve it. And that causes our love for him to deepen, our appreciation for him to deepen, our dependence upon him to deepen, because he is everything, hallelujah, and we are nothing. Oh, friends, if we could only learn what Job learned that day, it would change our lives upon this earth forever. It would change our prayers. It would change the way we approach God. It would change what we ask from God. It would change how we see God. It would change the course of our journey day by day and moment by moment. We would never see this world the same again, and we would certainly never see him the same way again. We must see him high, exalted, and lifted up. We must see ourselves brought low before him, humbled and surrendered. And then we will live as faithfully before him as the angels who serve him, never questioning his commands, never questioning his counsel, never questioning his will, but trusting in him and him alone for all things and at all times. Oh, friends, lift your hearts this morning. Lift your hands this morning. Give him praise and adoration and glory. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And then be thankful that he has imparted to you even a small piece of his mercy and compassion. We owe him our lives, friends. And that is what holiness is. A life spent in obedience and surrender 
unto the almighty God whom we serve. Well, may he bless your walk today. May he open your eyes to truth. May he fill your heart with praise. And even though you may be walking through the shadow of the valley of death, lift your hearts, lift your hands, and say in all things and at all times, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.